Matthew chapter number one, and I'll be doing a little bit of hodgepodge, mix, mishmash, mix, match, preach, teach, whatever, however it comes out for the next few minutes. I'll do my best to redeem the time, and we can always continue another time if necessary. Again, a big thank you to those who are online. God bless you, Carmelita, Andrea. Good to see you online and look to see you in person sometime very soon. Nicolette, amen. Bless you, Lorna, amen. Walkers, Heath, and all of you who are online, amen. God bless you. And uh, Matthew chapter 1, we'll read two verses, 21 and 23. And then I'll start out with a little bit of mathematical equation, amen, spiritual equation. And then we can draw a little bit of conclusion as we proceed, amen. Who is Jesus, amen. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, let's read it together. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. You may be seated, everybody. Verse 21, if you keep your Bibles open. And if you'd focus on 21 and 23, just to be able to draw, amen, the lines of the equation, there are some common elements that if we follow them, we should come with a particular conclusion. Verse 21, notice the word she in verse 21. And verse 23, she is in reference to the virgin. So we're going to go back and forth the media folk may not flip-flop, but you can do that on your scripture. If they do that, bless you. But if you notice in 21, the word she, and the same is identified in 23 as the virgin. In 21, you'll notice the word a son. Amen. And in verse 23, you'll notice the word a child, and the child is called the son. She shall bring forth Amen. Uh, a son. The child is the son. So the woman is the virgin. She is the virgin. The son is the child. And the Bible says in 21, his name, 23 speaks of his name. And go back to 21, his name shall be called Jesus. And in 23, the same child from the same mother that is called Jesus is also called in 23, Emmanuel. In verse 21, Jesus' job and purpose is to save. In 23, the name of Emmanuel is God with us. So, conclusion with all the equation and the lines going back and forth. The conclusion is Jesus, the son of the woman or the virgin, is God with us to save us from our sins? Jesus, the seed of the woman, prophesied of in Genesis chapter 3, 15, would come to bruise the head of the serpent, is God with us. This was, of course, to fulfill that promise that was made. So the question that we'd like to start off with in this little bit of lesson is, why did God, a spirit, conceive in Mary's womb to become a man, the seed of a woman, a son? Why did he, the son of God, who manifested as a son, amen, become among us, Emmanuel, uh, God with us? And the answer is very simple. If you look at verse 21, she shall bring forth the Son, which is God with us, Emmanuel. Call his name Jesus, which means Jehovah saves. 
And that's the mission of Jesus. Jesus came to save us from our sins. Only God can save us from our sins. If Jesus is God, Emmanuel, God with us, it simply means only Jesus, the God, can save us from our sins. Allah can't save you. The 33 million gods of Hinduism cannot save you. The gods that you make and call them gods cannot save you. Your, your charms and superstitious ide ideas cannot save you. Uh, I had a man come to see me. I was very busy, and he just walking off the street. And he said, Pastor, uh, I'm struggling with a lot of fears because people are doing voodoo on me, and, and I'm having these dreams. And I mean, he was troubled. You could see that he was troubled. And I listened to him talk for about five minutes. I said, sir, can I stop you here? I said, you've got a sin problem. I said, your sin problem is not the things you're doing. It's the fact that you fail to believe that there's one God. And when you don't believe that there's one God, you'll believe any other God can hurt you. But when you know that there's only one God, the other God's eyes they have, but they can't see. Ears they have, but they can't hear. So I ain't afraid of no ghost. Am I in a real church today? So if you come to church and you got to wear your guard ring and you got to tie a chicken bone around your toes to go to work, hey, you're in the right place to lay that down and know that there's only one saving God. He saves. He saves. Look around. I said, he saves. Is there, is there, is there anyone who was a sinner lying cheating rotten low down hell bound is there anybody or do we have only some sanctimonious liars pretending to be Christians do we have anybody here that you've been saved by God's grace Everybody lift your hands and say after me, the Lord is my Savior. Lift your hands, everybody. No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to provoke you because this is, this is my work day. And I'm not going to waste a day. I'm, I want to go home knowing that you are delivered. You didn't come here for nothing. So I want everybody with your hands raised. If you got a stroke, lift your hands. That's how defined I am about this. And I want you to declare with your own mouth, say it. The Lord is my savior. I shall not fear for my future. Make a declaration. The Lord is my savior. My children shall not be tormented by demons. I claim salvation. I claim health. I claim joy. I claim prosperity over my household. The fear of man shall not ensnare me no divorce no suicide no generational diseases no generational curses shall come upon my family I cancel in the name of Jesus Christ all of Satan's plans over my family because only Jesus can save from sin now if you believe that everybody I want to give God a praise lift your hands curses are just cancelled the blood of Jesus has us washed over angels have just done a work I want everybody in this house of the Lord today to give God a praise right now if Jesus can save And if Jesus is God and he only can save, and if being saved is a good thing, being saved is a good thing. If being saved is a good thing, then turn to your neighbor and tell them, if you're not saved, get saved. No, no, I mean, you tell them. You're gonna, 
I deputize you to preach with me. Preach that sinner under conviction on your pew. Look him in the eye until he feels ashamed of his sin. Look the backslider in the face until they feel blushed by their sin. And tell them, if you're not saved, saving is a good thing. And if you're not saved, get saved. Give up your guns. Give up your drugs. Give up your adultery. Give up your fornication. Give up your lying, cheating attitude. Get saved. Get saved is a good thing. Now God chose the Jews, the indestructible Jews. God said if before the Jews are destroyed, then the ordinance of the sun and the moon would have to be destroyed first. So, so the Jews are literally indestructible. I think it was Frederick the Great that asked his marquee, give me one sign. One irrefutable sign to prove that there is a God. And his servant responded, the indestructible Jews. If you want to know that our God is real, just look at the Jews. And God said, I've chosen the Jews to become witnesses to the entire world, to the whole earth, that there is only one God and Savior. God chose an indestructible witness that will stand in every generation to prove that there is only one God and Savior and there's none beside him, before him, or after him, but he only is Savior. Not your money, not your education, not your pedigree. That cannot save you. The only, I mean, you can have friends in the court system that can get you out of a little bit of trouble. You can have some connections with the law that can turn their eyes the next way. But when I'm talking about saving your soul from sin, no one but Jesus Christ can save a soul from sin. And there is only one true God that can give you the peace and the joy of salvation. Isaiah 43 10 to 11, God said it like this. You are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen. The Jews, the church now, while we're spiritual Jews, we're not replacing the nation. But you are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen. That you may know, and that you may believe, and that you may understand. Listen now, that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. So if there's a God that says I was before the true God, that's a lying God. And if there's someone says there's a God. God after the creation which is the true God that person is lying there has never been a time where there has never been God and there will never be a time where there will not be God and because God is God indestructible he will be and forever will be but who is he I God said make no mistake about it I even I am the Lord and beside me there is what no savior so when Matthew 1 said she shall bring for the son and they shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sinner it could not be another God because only one Savior and that Savior is God and I'm so glad I know who God is he's not Allah I know who God is he's a Buddha I know who God is our God has a name our God has a name and the name of our God is Jesus and he saves for the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth in it and they are saved I'm telling you there's no other name that can save mankind than Jesus Christ and he's not just a, a savior separate from God he is God the savior the God and savior no other savior of the Old Testament is the Jesus the savior of the New Testament and you must not only believe that Jesus saves, or that God saves, I should say, you must believe in his name. 
You must believe that his name is revealed as a saving name of Elohim. Yah or Yahweh, Jehovah is Savior, Redeemer, manifested as Jesus and there is no other Savior. And so to have the experience of salvation, you've got to put your faith in the name of God. And the name of God, Emmanuel, you did the equation, is Jesus. So John 1, 12 says, to as many as received him. I want everyone to please pay attention. To as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave you the power, the authority, the privilege, or the right to become the sons of God. Even to as many as believe on his name. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just believe that there is a God, but you must know the name of the true and living God. Because salvation is in that name. Sins are only forgiven by the application and faith in that name. Acts 4.12. Speak with me now, everybody, and please get on the scripture. Let's read it together. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other did you hear what i just said isaiah said there's no other savior and the bible is saying there is salvation in no other name for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved so when you are saved you must put your faith in the name of your savior who is jesus christ who is god of the old testament and the jesus of the new testament he alone can save to be saved you must know the name to be saved you must believe in the name and I'm gonna take it further to be saved you must be baptized in the name because that name only has salvation you can go to church and not be saved you can sing in the choir and not be saved you can be a pastor and not be saved but if you really are I wish I had an apostolic church here but if you really want to be saved you must be buried in the name for neither it's your salvation none before me none beside me none after me there's only one god and one way to be saved i am the way i am the truth i am the life and salvation is in no other name would someone show the name right now and give your god a praise Jesus got talking to the Jews in John chapter number 12. John chapter 8, I should say. And Jesus told them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees said unto him, Ah, you're bearing record of yourself. Therefore, your record can't be true. God is light. Jesus said, I am the light. And the Pharisees said, ah, no, I don't believe you because you're saying it by yourself. And there's nobody to back you up on it. Because in the Jewish law, truth has to be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And they saw only Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the light. And they said, no, can't be the truth. Look at verse number 17. Jesus said, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men, is, or, uh, two men is true. But I am one that be a witness of myself. Listen now. And the father that sent me, he be a witness of me. But they only saw one. <laughs> so they couldn't figure it out. Because Jesus said, I've, I've got corroborative evidence. I've got confirmation that I am God. I am the I am. And they said, you can't be the I am because you're talking by yourself. Oh no, you see me, but what you don't see is my father. I bear witness of myself. 
and the father that sent me, he bears witness. Then said they unto him, where is your father? Jesus answered and said unto them, you neither know me nor my father. For if you had known me, you'd have known my father also. They couldn't figure that out. So Jesus continued talking and Jesus said down in verse number 24, if I, I say unto, therefore unto you that if you believe if you, that you shall die, I therefore say unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die. I'm talking about only one savior. Jesus is God. Our savior. Now Jesus said, if you if you if you'd been, if you had seen me now and believed this, you'd have known that that you I you, you have known my father also. Then Jesus said, Amen. It, I, I say unto you, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sin. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said, Even as I've been telling you from the beginning. Look at verse 27, everybody, and read it. And they understood not that he spoke to them of the father so when jesus except you believe that, that i am he he's saying if you don't believe that i am the father if you don't believe that the father is in me you shall die in your sin he is talking to them about the great father ladies and gentlemen you must feed the hungry you must clothe the naked you must cover the poor you must visit the sick you must find cures for cancer you must get your degrees you must buy property you must gain wealth but i'm here to let you know if you gain all these things and you don't know Jesus as Savior. It is all for naught. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The only thing that can redeem the soul is the name of Jesus. Make no mistake about it. Only God can save a rotten sinner that's going to hell from their doom. Only Jesus can save us from our sins. Brothers and sisters, you must hear the word of the Lord today uh, and God said in Isaiah chapter 43 uh, and 25 uh, I uh, even I uh, am he uh, that blotteth out uh, your transgressions uh, and remember them uh, no more uh, brothers and sisters uh, the water doesn't forgive sin uh, going down in the water does not wash away sin uh, but there's a name uh, when we put you down uh, in that water uh, and we say we baptize you uh, in the name uh, of Jesus Christ uh, there's a miracle uh, that happens uh, sins uh, are remitted uh, and they're remembered uh, no more. Uh, some of us uh, we had such a terrible record uh, that you wouldn't want anybody to know uh, what you have done. Uh, you've been cheating. Uh, you've been a liar. Uh, you've done everything wrong. Uh, but when you came to Jesus uh, and you went down in that name, uh, he washed away your sins uh, and he said, I uh, will remember it uh, no more. Uh, man may remember, but God said, what are you talking about? Uh, man may call it up, uh, but God said, what are you talking about? Uh, because when you go down uh, in that name, uh, oh, uh, it washes, uh, it cleanses, uh, it blots out. In the old days when men used to write before they had pens and typewriters and keyboard and all the stuff we type on today, they'd use ink and feather. And very often they would have blots because the ink would come out too much from the feather on the paper and make it in unintelligible and would make a big stain on the paper. But the writers would have what they call a blotter. And when the ink made a mess of the page, they would take the blotter and sap up the ink. And before you know it, the page was white again. I'm telling you, that's what Jesus does. Only Jesus can do that. When your conscience is as filthy as a workman's boot, boot bottom, and you come to Jesus with a broken heart and say, God, I'm so tired of my sin. Lord, the lies, the abortions, the guilt, the condemnation. But I come to Jesus weary, worn, and sad. But he took my sins away. He took them all away. Now I'm rejoicing because I'm set free by the name of the Lord. Is there anybody here today who want to give your God a praise? Because you remember the blots on your name, the blots on your page. But now, oh, 
what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again he washed me white as snow somebody who's glad you're saved let the enemy see you rejoice let the friends who are not saved get jealous for the joy of salvation therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion they shall be in gladness and joy and mourning and sorrows shall flee away that's what Jesus does though your sins be as scarlet I can make them white as snow though they be red red as crimson I can make them as white as wool there's something about the name of Jesus uh, that cleanses from sin uh, and I know the preachers don't want to preach it today they will tell you say amen uh, say a prayer uh, send me some money lay your hands on your TV uh, but that can't save uh, nothing can save uh, until you know uh, that you know that you know uh, that you know Jesus uh, has anyone ever met Jesus uh, when you met the Lord uh, you're meeting God uh, who is manifested in flesh uh, God uh, who cannot lie uh, God uh, who is not confused God who is absolute truth said to tell the world I even I Isaiah 43 11 am the Lord and beside me God said to tell the nations beside me so if Jesus shows up 700 years later than Isaiah's prophecy and say I am the Savior and God said there's no other Savior is God confused is God a man that he should lie no sir but I'm telling you it's a truth revealed that Jesus is God our Savior I'm excited about the Word of God today It's in German, God said, I am the Lord. Beside me, there is no Savior. That means no one else can deliver from sin. No one else can save you from a lost eternity. No one can free your conscience from the condemnation and the mess of your childhood that you carry. Been taught a lie and been conditioned by childhood nursery rhymes. And that's why so many people are so hopeless. Suicidal, drug overdosing because they're, they've gone to the place where churches don't talk about Jesus as Savior anymore. And when they get to the end of their ropes, they don't know that there's a first and a last. And so they, they, they turn on themselves. Brothers and sisters, we must understand this today that the Lord wanted to go beyond nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat upon a wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put that broken Humpty together again. That's what they want you to think. That when you go high and you fall down and you get broken, it's the end of your life. That's why they turn to drugs and suicide. But I'm here to let you know that ain't the truth. There's another God. There is another king that's greater than Humpty Dumpty. There is a Jesus that can save. He can save when you fall down and get broken. He can save when your heart is broken. He can save when your marriage is broken. He can save when your home is broken. He can save save when your spirit is broken there is a God that can put you back together again I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore I could have been dead I could have committed suicide but the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my helper the Lord there is a God who saves when you get to the bottom of the barrel and you don't know who to call just say Jesus he saves oh praise him somebody 
Oh, praise him, somebody. Isaiah 45, 12. Oh, my God. Lift your hands one more time. I feel the Spirit of the Lord moving. Shatarabahusa. I feel like calling out the spirit of anxiety. I feel like calling that spirit out today. Come on now, you're here. You're not even online, you're in the house. Anxiety has been dogging you. I'm talking to you. If you're not ashamed, I want you to scream Jesus right now. If it's you, I want you to scream. Don't be ashamed of anybody. If you're struggling with that spirit of anxiety, I want to scream Jesus loud as you can right now. Don't be afraid of anybody because when you call that name this time, he shall save you. Now I'm going to give you the privilege. Shout. I'm calling out anxiety. You're not going to commit suicide by this madness in your head. Call out the name Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to root this thing up. I want this thing plucked up. Somebody ought to hear me today. Jesus saves. I speak this with emphatic assurance. Jesus is not the second person of the Trinity. Jesus is God. Manifest in flesh. Isaiah 44, 6. I am first and last. I mean, that settles it. I am first. I am the last. And read everybody. Beside me, there can only be one first and last. But in Revelation 1 and 17, Jesus stood up on the banks of the Patmos and said to John, I am first. I am last. Which was and is and is to come. There can't be two first and last. There's only one first and last. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. First, number eight, ladies and gentlemen, in Isaiah 44. Read with me, everybody, because there's only one first and last. Anxiety cannot rule your mind. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Oh, I feel like giving God the praise right now. I know the Holy Ghost called of fear and anxiety. I know the Holy Ghost is saying depression has to go. I know the Holy Ghost is saying torment has to go. I'm not here just to preach another message. I'm on business for the king. It's God's work day to pluck up and root up and tear down and set free I feel the Holy Ghost walking down in the sanctuary I bind fear right now I bind anxiety I come against oppression so, I, I know you're taking your medication but you're not going to put the needle in your arm another day you're not going to snort one more day you're not going to go back to the bottle one more day is there anybody here I feel like it's a war fear because I know all hell is about to go to war but I know in whom I believe and I'm persuaded some Somebody help me shout, he's able. Fear not. Have I not told you? Have I not declared it to you? You are my witnesses. Why should you not fear? Why should anxiety not take control of your mind? Because God said, is there a God beside me? God is asking a question. Now, if God asks a question, he wants an answer. And God says, is there a God beside me? No, no, you're not even getting what I'm saying. I'm preaching to you who are struggling with fear. And God said, why are you so afraid? Is there a God beside me? What is God saying, Sean? God is saying, if you have me. (laughs) 
I take care of everything. I take care of the witches. I take care of the hexes. I take care of the voodoo worker. I take care of the cancer. I tell you about shut up. I feel like giving God a little praise. Am I in an apostolic church right now? Why are you afraid? God said, is there a God beside me? Answer the question. Is there a God? All of the gods. We are the work of men. Eyes of they, but they can't see. Ears of they, but they can't hear. Hands of they, but they can't heal. Feet of they, but they can't go to court with you. But our God, wherever you go, lo, I am. Is there a God beside our God? Why are you afraid? Why are you doubting? Why? I feel something moving in the atmosphere. God asked a question. God said, is there a God beside me? When nobody answered, God answered back and said, I told you, yeah, there is no God. And to confirm that there is no God, God said, I know not any. You didn't hear what I just said. God said, is there a God beside me? And God said, I know not any. So who is God? Is he some little idol you put on your coffee table? Is he some stature that you bow down to? No, no, no. When we talk about our God, we are talking about the omnipotent God. We are talking about the omniscient God. He knows all things. Never in the dark. Understands all things. And when God said, I don't know, it's because it doesn't exist. Is there another God? But our God, if God said, I'm Jesus. If God said, I'm Savior. If Jesus said, I'm God. If Jesus said, I'm Savior. Then there's only one God. Because God knows no other God. God, and I don't know of any other God. I recommend Jesus to the broken heart. I recommend Jesus to the confused mind. I recommend Jesus to the troubled soul. I recommend Jesus because when you got Jesus, you've got God. Can I just skip this and media? I'm gonna throw this in a little bit. I'm mixing all I'm mixing up a few things here, but go to first John chapter 5 and verse 21. I'm almost done. When you've got Jesus, you may not understand all the details and the minutiae of theology, but why he prayed and why he sent and all of that. But I want you to know. Whether you understand it or not, I don't understand it in the car I drive. I don't understand the laptop I'm using. I don't even understand what goes on when you flip a switch. I don't know anything about electricity and power and no. The only thing I can do is flip a switch, plug in on plug, change a light bulb. That's it. That's, that's my knowledge. But it doesn't mean I don't have the power. Verse 20. And we know. I don't understand all the other details. But I know. Oh, would anybody here, is anybody here understanding what I'm saying? Uh, we know that the Son of God has come. And have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. Everybody now. This is the true God and eternal life. Who is the true God? Jesus Christ, though manifested in the flesh. This is the true God and eternal life. He only can save you from sin. I 
I read this and I thought it was quite interesting. Because if only God can save from sin, the mathematical equation that I'm trying to paint in your mind and have you conclude is, if only God can save, and if Jesus said, I am the one who saves, Jesus is God. And I want you to know him. Because if you're not saved, you're lost. And only Jesus saves. God is the only one who can save. Jesus walked into, was in, a, in Capernaum in a house one, one day. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees were in the front row. Because they come to church too. Jesus was preaching and the house was packed to the rafters. That the Bible said they couldn't get through the door to come in. And I want to say to someone today, there's a miracle coming your way, but it's not going to come the ordinary way. It's not going to come to the normal doors. I feel this in my soul. The house was filled, but there were four men, had one friend that was sick of the palsy for a long, long time. And everywhere that man had to go, the four men had to carry the burden of this one man. Some of you are carrying some people right now, they need salvation. They need to meet Jesus. Every time you help them out, they get back in the midst. You've got to carry them. Pay their court bill, carry them. You go to a restaurant, you've got to carry them. Come on, get a job and carry yourself now. These four men carry this one man to Jesus. But when they got to church, the doors were barred up with the people. Blocked with the crowd. They tried to get in, but they couldn't get in. But the four men said, we're not going home the way we came. Is there anybody like that today? The men, they climbed up to the top of the roof. They tore down the roof. Let the man down before Jesus. In Mark 2 verse number 6, when Jesus saw the man sick of palsy, the roof torn up. The first thing Jesus said to the man, the Bible said, there, verse number 5, Jesus said when he saw their faith son thy sins be forgiven thee can you imagine you come to church bring a crippled man tired of the load you've been carrying and the preacher said I want to baptize you first you can say but, oh you're the minister to, to the felt needs Come on now, I know I'm preaching. That's what contemporary religion tells you to do. Minister to the felt needs. And I understand your felt need. But there's a need before the need. You know you need miracle for your body. But God knows that sometimes your messed up body is a spiritual condition. And we like to be North Americans. We prefer to treat symptoms than cure root causes. If you want better fruit, get a better root. So Jesus looked upon the man, saw the evidence. The man was crippled, saw the evidence. He was broke. And Jesus said the first thing to him was, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now that was a bombshell because the Pharisees and the Sadducees were sitting in the front row and they began to reason among themselves and this is what they say why doth this man speak blasphemy who can forgive sins but God The church didn't get it. You got it? You got it? Well, let me explain it a little bit further. Who said that? I mean, you're in my notes. Even the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes knew that only God can forgive sins. Messed up? You don't need a bath. Jesus. 
You know, a few years ago, a few years ago, and you may think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, a few years ago, I was in church, and a lady walked up to me on Sunday morning. She said, Pastor, I need to lend me $2,000. Sunday morning before church. I said, I said girl, what's, what's the problem? <laughs> she, said, she said, well, Pastor, you know, she, did you hear what I just said? A lady walked up to me, said, Sunday morning, Pastor, I need to lend me $2,000. I said, girl, what's the problem? And the lady, the girl said, well, my girlfriend uh, and I are together and her mother is trying to break us up. I said, oh, hold on. Girl, you got a girlfriend? Like that, like, 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 like that? She said, oh, yeah. And you want $2,000 from me? Of God's people's money. Because your girlfriend's mother is trying to break you up. So I said, so, so, so what do you want the $2,000 for? She said, well, I heard about a woman that if I pay her enough, she can fix it and break this mom's off her case. So I said, you want me to lend you God's money to go in a homosexual relationship? She said, yes. I said, why do you think that's right? She said, well, because God is love and I love her. I said, devil, you are a liar. Folks, before it was over, I was baptizing her in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you, you don't need to go get a bath. You don't need to consult with a witch. What you need is a good baptism of the Holy Ghost. Only Jesus can forgive your sins. Rotten as you are, I call upon, I wish I had a church in here today. I said, the Pharisees know that only Jesus can forgive sins. The devil knows only Jesus uh, can forgive sins. Uh, God knows uh, only Jesus uh, can forgive sins. Uh, I know. Uh, do you know uh, my Jesus? Uh, I want somebody uh, to raise your hand uh, and give God a praise uh, and shout down the devil. Uh, shout down the liar. Uh, shout down the darkness. Uh, come on now. Uh, you can have power. Uh, you can be set free. Uh, you can be delivered. Uh, if you know the name, uh, there's something uh, about the name. Uh, Satorebasha. Salvation. Is in the name. Raise your hand. Shout. There's no other Savior. Five minutes and I'm done. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Do you know him as the God and Savior of your soul? Church, I am not, I'm not going to be content to see this place filled on a Sunday morning with people who just like the music. I heard, I heard they say the pastor is a nice guy. I've met him as yet. But... <laughs> But I don't want you to come here <laughs> because the pastor's a nice guy. Oh, I want you to meet Jesus. <laughs> oh, would you, would you lift your hands, everybody? I want you to meet Jesus. Sister Yoni, when that lady told me about her testimony last night, when she fell out on a stroke, she said, I know I couldn't talk, but in my head, I wasn't gone. Shut up. They, she said, I heard them ask me, what's your name? And she knew, she said, I know I couldn't say anything. Do you know where you are? She heard, but she couldn't say anything. But said, the one thing I knew was, I was saying, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Can I put to somebody? Oh, God, when all hell breaks loose, when the bottom falls out, when you don't know who to call upon, there is a Savior that's called Jesus. He can save you from your sins. He can deliver you from your enemies and your foes. When your enemies and your foes come upon you to eat of your flesh, just say, Jesus. 
and they shall fall. I was one can chase a thousand. When somebody raise your hand right now and call the name, the Pharisees know. Don't look cute with me this Sunday morning. I'm here to give you hell and trouble. I want the devil to know I'm not going to let you go home the way you came. I'm here to fight devils. See you delivered. There is no other name. Somebody shout the name. I'm here to tear down the gates of hell. Stand everybody. During. You must remember this. God asked, is there a God beside me? And what did he say? I don't know any. No. And then he says, I don't know any. And if God doesn't know them, they don't exist. They're nothing. But do you think God knows who he is? Do you think God knows who he is? Jesus was doing 40 days of fasting. And when he was in the middle of the wilderness, Satan show up in Mark 4, 6, and 7. And Satan began to question the identity of Jesus. And Satan said, if you are the son of God, you're going to cast yourself down. The Son of God responded to Satan in verse 7 and said, Thou shalt. God ain't confused. There is no other God. And if you don't know who God is, God knows who he is. And God, who is Jesus, manifest in flesh, looked upon Satan and said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So who is Jesus? He is the Lord thy God. What's the name of the Lord your God? Ah, oh, his name is Jesus. Come on, somebody, we're going to call the name right now. I said, what's the name of your healer? What's the name of your miracle worker? What's the name of your savior? What's the name? of your God. I said call the name right now in the house of the Lord. Everybody with a voice call the name. Bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits. He forgave your iniquities. He heals your diseases. He crowns you with loving kindness. He satisfies your your mouth uh, with good things. Uh, he makes your mouth up uh, with wings like eagles. Uh, I want everybody uh, in the sanctuary to praise your Savior. Uh, I said praise your God. Uh, praise your Jehovah Jireh. Uh, praise your provider. Uh, praise your way maker. Uh, praise the lifter up of your head. Uh, praise him uh, who's a friend in the midnight hour. He is a bright and morning star. Uh, I said praise him. Uh, he is God. Uh, your Savior. He is God on the platform. Uh, he is God back at the door. Uh, he is God when the lightning flashes, he's God down in my soul. It's like fire, shut up in my bone. Somebody uh, help me praise Jesus. Help me praise Jesus. I am the Lord. There is none else. I am the Lord. I call him Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is a savior to me. Oh, would you lift your hands, everybody? Oh, Come on, I want you to raise your hands right now. I want the cycle of mental illness to be broken right now. I want schizophrenia gone. 
I want anxiety gone. I want sneers broken. I want freedom in this house. Please lift your hands, everybody. Come, Holy Ghost. Shata Arabosa. Walk up and down in our midst now, Jesus. Shata Bahoresa. La Mama Coseta Rabahasata. Yes, Jesus. Come on, this is the presence of the Lord I'm talking about. Yes, yes, come on, reach out to the Lord right now with your hands raised, your faith focused. He's about to save you from something right now. Come on, fear not a praise. Mercy is at your disposal. Rama Sheto Rabasa. Grace is flowing your way right now. Healing and favor is coming down the road right now. Come on, in the back, across the sanctuary, on the sidelines, there's a healing virtue. There's a salvation power moving in this atmosphere right now. Salvation is in no other name. It's in no other name. It's in no other name. It's in no other name. Can have your full attention, everybody. Do we have anyone who believe in the name of Jesus right now? Put your hands down. Do you have anyone with a need right now? You've got a need. I'd like you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. While I was preparing yesterday, I felt the Lord move upon me to close a service like this. With your hands raised, those with a need. I want two or three of you who believe in the name to go lay hands on everyone. If you've got the Holy Ghost, called by the name of Jesus Christ. I want two or three of you to get together and you're going to call the name of Jesus over one another. Because God shared in my heart that if two or three shall agree in my name touching anything today it's going to be done for you. Come on, grab a hold of that person right now. You don't have to know their names but you're going to pray in authority. Latayasha. Yabahoshataraba. I feel the Yaboromahasa. Come on up, begin to pray with authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. The promise of God is true. If two or three of you shall agree in my name, touch that thing. Come on, pray in the name of the Lord. Come on, pray in the name of Jesus, everybody. All across the sanctuary, everyone with faith in your heart, they're going to pray over one another right now. He's going to save you from that thing right now. He want to save you. Save you from sin. That holy name. No greater name. Yes. Pray. Call the name. Call the name. Oh God, oh, chains 
are being broken. Heavy hearts are being delivered. Oh God. Oh God. Change it at home. Change it on the job. Let this place be filled with the miracles. Because we believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, everybody. Something about the name. Hallelujah. Now, everybody, when you lift your hands and begin to rejoice in the God of your salvation, rejoice. Know the name. Hallelujah. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, He came to save you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No other name. No other name. Jesus. That's right, that corrodes. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Real to Jean, pray in the spirit. Nicolette prays for your victory right now. Agree online and pray. Agree and pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Will you give him praise right now, everybody? I won't go home the way I came. I won't go home the way I came. I'd like to close by reading this to you. If you can give me Colossians 2, 9 and 10 in the Living Bible. For those who prayed and those who believed. For in Christ, there is all of God in human body. In Christ, you have all of God. In Christ, 
you have all of God in human body so you have everything when you have Christ would you lift your hands and grasp the magnitude of this inexhaustible promise you have everything when you have Christ and you are filled with God through your union with Christ who is he he is the highest ruler with authority over every principality and power now would you give your God a praise like you've got every thing that's right Woo. somebody celebrate hallelujah healing you got it peace you got it joy you got it that name work come on give him praise give God the glory that name works you have everything you have everything when you have Christ you got joy you got peace you got hope you got power you got freedom you got healing it works hallelujah Oh God, I'd like to make this final appeal now that you've heard, you've rejoiced, you believed. Can I see the hands of those who believe, those who believe, you believe Jesus is God or Savior. The great God and Savior, that's what the Bible calls him. You believe. I'd like to make a final appeal. The scripture says, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved so if you believe and you're not baptized you're not yet saved i'd like to see the hands of anyone any man any woman love god love truth believe you want to be saved today i'd like you to raise your hand there's one man come forward sir is there another man is there another woman courageous let's celebrate that let's celebrate he's not ashamed he's not intimidated oh god bless you sir is there anybody else i'm going to invite you to walk the walk down these aisles there's no need to delay no need to be oh god bless you god come on let's celebrate this precious family coming down in tears oh god come on church we got to rejoice I feel like there's a couple more of you holding on because you're ashamed or you're I'm gonna invite you to take the steps T sir thank you for coming come on we're gonna we're gonna brother Kirk crank it up celebrate it's celebration mode right now we're gonna rejoice because this is the work of God only God can save you is there anybody else today is there anybody else today hallelujah will you stretch your hands toward them to pray right now can we get a couple of our ministers come on ministers please brother mark please please we need you down here now brother sam brother ben we just need a couple of folk brother ben had to leave elder amen we need we need just a couple more praying brother john brother thank you brother david brother Joseph is there anyone else that name delivers oh God I just feel it in my soul that name delivers oh God I feel the presence of the Lord one more time 
Can I have this beautiful congregation so filled with faith to raise your hands? And would you stretch forth toward them? Would we begin to pray over their lives? Precious family. Would you begin to pray? Sister Narai, there's a young lady, another young lady. Oh, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. You got to get in the ark today. This is your day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. It's a day of salvation. Oh God, you're the great redeemer, you're the great savior. Thanks for coming, sir. Brother Trey, would you bring him over? Come on, walk with him. Walk with the young man. We walk that journey ourselves. You're not alone, we're rejoicing with you. The old church is rejoicing with you. Oh my God, they're still coming. They're still coming. We're gonna pray with them, believe with them. Oh God. Hallelujah! Oh yes, Lord!
He is our healer. Call the name of Jesus. He is our provider. Call the name of Jesus. He is our protector. Call the name of Jesus. He is our deliverer. 